So in this question, we have a pendulum bob that is swinging back and forth. We know that at the lowest point of its trajectory, the speed is eight meters per second. We've called that lowest point of the trajectory sort of a baseline height of zero meters. You can think of that as being at the ground level. We've called that height y sub one is equal to zero meters. Now, as the pendulum swings back and forth, it's going to rise to a height that is above that zero meter line. We need to find a useful expression for that height. So in other words, we want to come up with an expression for this height right here. We're going to call this y sub 2. And to do that, we note that the length of the string is 4 meters. So that means that this length right here is 4 meters. That is the length of the string. And then in addition to that, this length here is also 4 meters. We're going to try to label that very carefully here. So from the tippy top down to the ground level there is indeed 4 meters. Now it will be useful for us to also come up with an expression for this distance here. And we can just arbitrarily call that W for now, just choose your favorite letter. We want to find an expression for that W. And to do that, we look at this right triangle that we have drawn very carefully in the picture. And we can see from that right triangle, and let's scoot down the page here a little bit, that the cosine of the angle is equal to now, Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and the side that is adjacent to theta is the w, and then the hypotenuse of that right triangle is 4 meters. If we multiply both sides of that by 4 meters, we can see that w is equal to 4 cosine of theta. So, why is that useful? Well, look back at the picture. If you look carefully, you will see that the w plus the y2 would equal the total length of the string. It would equal that 4 meters right here. So let's write a little equation to encapsulate that. We have w plus y2 would equal the total length of the string, which again was 4 meters. Now we just figured out that w can be expressed as 4 cosine theta. And then if we subtract both sides of this equation by 4 cosine theta, we could see that y2 equals 4 minus 4 cosine theta. We can get a little fancy perhaps and factor out the 4. We would have 4 times the quantity 1 minus cosine theta. So let's go back to our drawing and label y2 as equaling 4 times the quantity 1 minus cosine of theta. Now we will see momentarily why that is useful to us. We can clean up the drawing a little bit. And now we want to start thinking about how to actually solve for part A. Part A gives us the angle and we need to calculate the speed at that particular angle. So how do we do this? Well, we know that because there's no friction, we can say there's no air resistance, kind of an idealized situation, that the conservation of mechanical energy would apply here. So what does that mean? Well, it means that the sum of the final kinetic and gravitational potential energies equals the sum of the initial kinetic and gravitational potential energies. Now we can expand each of these expressions. So for the final values, we would have the following. And all we have done there have, is have expanded the kinetic energy and the gravitational potential energy to their respective expressions. We've included subscripts of two to indicate the final values. We'll do the same thing on the right-hand side. Now, to clarify this one and two notation, location number one would be the initial location. That's at the bottom of the swing. And then location number two is going to be at the final position. That's going to be at the top of the swing. And we can begin to make some substitutions here as well, because check it out, in the equation we have that y2 right there. Well remember, y2 was the 4 times 1 minus cos theta. So let's go ahead and plug in 4 times 1 minus cos theta for that y2. In addition, we know that the initial height, y sub 1, is equal to 0 meters. So what that means is that that last term, you'll have mg times 0, that'll make that term go to 0. So that simplifies as well. And then keep simplifying because you have the mass appearing in all three of the remaining terms. We can cancel out that mass by basically dividing each term by m. And perhaps at this stage we can begin to plug in all of these known values. We don't know v2, that's actually what we're looking for, but g of course is 9.8 meters per second squared. We will omit units for clarity times, and then we have 4 minus cosine of theta, which was given to us as 60 degrees for this part of the question. And then on the other side, we have 1 half times the speed initial squared. That initial speed was 8 meters per second. We'll square that. Now, let's pick up our calculators, and let's simplify this term and this term. Make sure it's 
calculator is set to degree mode. So that calculated first term is 19.6. The other side is 32. Let's subtract 19.6 from both sides. And when we do that, we get 12.4. Then multiply both sides by 2. You'll get 24.8 on that side. And then finally, take the square root of both sides. And here's your answer to part A. We can see that the speed of the bob at position 2 is approximately 4.98 meters per second. So that's the correct answer for part A. Let's go up and look at what part B wanted. It said, what is the greatest angle with the vertical that the string will reach during the stone's motion? So we know that eventually this bob is going to swing high enough so that it momentarily comes to rest. You can kind of close your eyes and imagine something swinging back and forth. Every time it reaches its maximum height, it's going to stop for a moment. So what this would mean is that the speed at position two is now going to be zero meters per second. And that is going to be how we solve part B. So to continue solving for that, let's go back and look at our conservation of energy equation. So this one right here. Now, as noted in this part of the question, that final speed V sub two will be zero. So that's gonna knock out this term right here. And then recall that initially the height of the bob was zero. And so that knocks out this term once again right here. And then we know that the Y sub two was that four times one minus cosine of theta. So let's plug that in. The mass still appears in all terms in the remaining equation. So we divide that out. We can start plugging in perhaps, we know G. We do not know this angle. So that's what we're solving for in this part of the problem. On the other side, we have that initial speed of eight and then we'll square that. So on the right hand side, we have 32. The next thing that you could do is divide both sides of the equation by the 9.8. So on the right hand side, you're going to get about 3.265. Continuing with the algebra here, you would divide both sides of the equation by four. So that way the right hand side gives you about 0.816. Let's then subtract one from both sides. So this gives you negative cos of theta is equal to negative 0.184, roughly divide both sides by a negative one. So now you have the cosine equaling positive 0.184. And then remember to solve for the angle, you just take the inverse cosine on both sides. And when you do that, you will see that theta is approximately 79.4 degrees. So this is the correct answer to part B of the question. We go to part C now. And part C is asking us for the total, there it is, total mechanical energy of the system. So that's pretty easy because energy is conserved. So what we could do is simply select point one and calculate the total mechanical energy at that point. At any other point in the system, that energy would re remain constant. So it would be the same value as it is at point one. Now the energy at point one was simply the kinetic energy. Remember that the potential energy at point one would be zero because the height was zero. So all we really need to do now is calculate one half times the mass times the speed at position one squared. We have all of these values. So when we plug that in, we will get 64 joules. That is the total mechanical energy at position one, but it's also the total mechanical energy of the system because again, that energy is conserved throughout. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it. But of course, please do not feel obligated to do so.